Hi there, I'm Sachiko. And I'm Moritz. Hey, we want to show you our 2009 GMC Savannah box truck that we converted into a camper over the last 15 months. We started last year in Feb and now it's finished and we're going on our trip. Welcome to our humble abode. It was originally a van for a telecom company for fiberglass splicing. So they had counters on the side already. It came with a battery as well as a heater that was already pre-configured into the main fuel tank. Um, but we decided that all of those counters were really ugly and we've transformed it into this. So starting in the back here, this is our backslash front doors. And Moritz has done a phenomenal job putting pine panels in the back just to cover up the metal that was behind there. We've even got our own little secret password door. Um, it serves really well as a window when we're trying to get wind and airflow into the place when we turn on our fantastic fan. And this is just kind of like our mudroom area when you first walk in. We've got a shelf where we can easily access all of our coats and all of our shoes super easy to access and of course you know when you're in a van you kind of shove things where storage will fit it um, leading up into this area we've got a dinette when we want to sit and have dinner we just pop open this table and this is like our dinner area slash workstation we've been able to like mount a monitor arm here so that we can edit our videos and also put a projector on the end of the table and project it onto our wardrobe across the way and that serves us you know movie style or video editing style and the nifty thing about this is that it also serves as a standing desk so we raised up the platform for two reasons the first reason being for storage, obviously, we've got all the clunky stuff here, like our, um, these are our camping chairs and we've got yoga mats and like a camping table shoved underneath there. So this area also converts into a couch or if you're a small person, you could probably sleep here as well. So we ended up making all of these cushions. Um, the back cushions were from an old couch that we had. We recycled it and these bottom cushions are from our old mattress so we simply i mean you always say simply and then it ends up being like a whole journey to do something inside a camper van pop it in the middle check the cushions however you want it and you end up with pretty much a couch and it fits like a full-size person if you move these guys that you could pop your pillow on the back and you know your feet will dangle but so be it you're living in a camper van this is our kitchen um, this is a butcher block top that we also upcycled from an old office in downtown Toronto so these this is like really high quality hardwood countertops that we got for next to nothing like 150 bucks underneath are just IKEA drawers Back here are drawers that we made ourselves. And because of this project, we decided we would just buy prefabricated stuff because it was a lot of work to figure out the drawer slides and everything. I do have to say that these drawers are definitely less durable and hold less weight than the ones that we built. Like the ones that we built have like really thick, heavy duty drawer slides that slide all the way out. And of course the plywood is a lot thicker than the stuff. This is our junk drawer up here. You know, Ikea is cardboard and plastic. For like day-to-day -day cooking, we usually just use like our camp stove thingy. You know, pull these two things up, set it up. And usually we're just making coffee and tea. We're boiling like noodles and vegetables and cooking like really quick meats and stuff. So this is really all we need. This fridge is a Hisense four and a half cubic liter fridge. It's a regular dorm fridge. And Moritz decided to modify it so that it would work with our 24 volt system, which is not something that it would work with originally. And this fridge we got for like $80. If you're buying like a regular RV fridge that locks and like works with a 12 volt system, I think that's like a thousand bucks. So we figured, hey, let's go with an option that 
is more budget friendly, makes more sense. And then if we decide that down the line when we need something that's a little bit fancier and works better with the lifestyle, then we still have that option of upgrading versus never having tried out like a budget friendly option and then seeing if that works out first. So this sink area, this is actually a pot filler. It's not, it's not a, a regular faucet. We decided to use one of these instead because it comes with two spouts. This spout just feeds us water directly from the tank without being secondly filtered. We have two filters. Um, this spout feeds us water for drinking. So it tastes like Brita filter water. It's like really, really sweet compared to if we're getting it from this spout, it tastes a little bit like plastic. Sink is just an Ikea sink. We've kept the counter space really tiny to force us to wipe our dishes dry after we wash them so that we don't leave things lying around because when you're living in such a small space, any additional clutter makes the space feel even smaller. And we want to prevent ourselves from doing that and kill those bad habits of ours. As you can see, there's a ton of stuff in the sink right now. We just stop driving. So when we're driving, we take all of the things that will start flying around the camper and we stick them in the sink so that they won't break and they'll travel safely. I really love this part of our sink cabinetry that Moritz built. It pops open like this and when we're just cooking, I leave this part open and just easily access garbage to check things out. Um, this whole top comes off so that we can access our battery underneath. So this is our wardrobe and we've managed to fit like the majority of our clothing in here. We have a little bit of clothing underneath the couch but the rolling style works really well and we try to really downsize into clothing that we will need on a daily basis. This is our chuck everything in the back plus the bike storage. Um, we have two hybrid bikes here so that we can, in case of emergency, bike to the next town, but mostly we've been using it for mountain biking on trails. We are both novice mountain bikers, so we're still learning. It's uh, been a bumpy ride, <laughs> no pun intended. So we've got a ton of storage down here as well. This is literally all climbing equipment. Like this is a whole bag of metal for climbing. Also have our little Wii Boost here, which actually works phenomenal. This thing improves the speed of our internet by 400 times, which is so mind blowing for us, especially since we're both kind of working on the road. This is our bathroom. Welcome plus storage composting toilet that we built ourselves and similar to the fridge we decided to do like a diy thing ourselves for like about a hundred bucks instead of buying a nature's head toilet which is like a thousand dollars if we do decide on that we can get that later um it's just a simple composting toilet i'm gonna not open it because we did use it this morning um but it's just got a funnel for separating the liquids and then a bucket in the back for the so uh, the solids which we cover with uh, pine shavings that we still have to find room for and this shower is made using vinyl it was the cheapest material we could find per square foot when we're using the shower itself we take this entire box and we just put it here and then that way we can step in the shower and have plenty of space and this is not waterproof unfortunately and the shower pan because this is like a custom size for the for the shower. Uh, we built the shower pan out of fiberglass and epoxy ourselves. So it's not a prefab shower pan. We built it out of leftover materials we had from last year's build of our uh, rooftop tent. To protect the LEDs from getting wet. Um, I think this was Moritz's, no, I think this was like our design together. We just like wanted to build lighting that was a little unusual, um, that looked more spa-like. And this was all we could come up with, but. Works. One of the first additions that we built for this van was actually the skylight because when you first walked in uh, at the beginning originally, this part of the box was just so dark that we're like, oh, we've got, we definitely got to do something. And that was the solution that we came up with. So we added in the skylight and it brings in so much light into this whole part of the van. And the bed is just part of the alcove that you can see over top of the cab on the outside so like the nose part of the box and 
I originally said no to the permanent bed, but Moritz convinced me that this would be a good idea. And I'm really glad that he did that because there was no way that I am setting up a bed every single day and tearing it down because it was just way too much work. There is not like a lot of knee room. You could not do 90 degrees with your knees, but you can do shallower than that. Um, and we're both small people and we like climbing, so it works out really well for us. This here is like a cute little Bavarian flag. Moritz had like a bachelor style giant Bavarian flag uh, in our old bedroom and I told him that's gotta go. So I made him a little flag instead. Underneath the mattress is the regular slots that you would get in a bed and that's really important in a van build because if you don't have the gaps underneath the mattress inside the box moisture tends to build up and if there's moisture underneath your mattress it will start to mold all right so for gray water we really rely on a 20 liter jack here because most of the time we will be off grid and then i'll just remove this hose and we'll dump the water into the meadows um, yeah we we'll use biodegradable soap so i don't think it's a huge issue if we dump a few liters and yeah when we're somewhere in the cities we'll we'll just dump it in this one our water inlet is here so it goes into this 90 liter tank that sits directly under there um, i did add a uv led which i hope will cleanse our water mm -hmm. like give us a little bit more portability on our roof we have 400 watts of solar feed down into our big lithium battery that's two kilowatt hours i went with a 24 volt system because i wanted to save on some copper because if you do the 12 volt and you run like big appliances like our water heater or our inverter it gets um yeah you, you get really thick wires i'm not a fan at all of ugly little panels that show you like your water or your solar power so you won't see any of those in the van because I got this home automation system so yeah shows you the solar production um, you can see I don't know how much water we have left in our water tank and see our water heater can turn it on and off and yeah of course you don't want to pull up the tablet every time so all the quick functions I have here like turning on our shower lights or our kitchen light you get it on pretty quickly and yeah same as in the back there's another set of switches so when you come in you can turn on the main lights or you do the same thing from the front for quick access and that is where electric and plumbing is placed into and yeah we have this 10 liter water tank in here and i also fitted it out with a 24 volt heating element so it runs directly off the battery and yeah it draws about 600 watts and heats up the tank in 45 minutes so it's fairly quick and on a day like today it, you hardly notice it in the battery even like the solar panels they can i've seen them produce up to 380 watts which is very close to their nominal rate and yeah at that point you minimally lose on the battery and you get your hot water for free i find that pretty amazing battery booster however it's a a pretty weak one um, it charges with like 15 amps so for this giant battery you would still need to drive eight hours to get like from zero to 100 um, it's it's more like to top up so we can run our fridge in case there is like a long period of bad weather then yes i i can engage that too so our um, heater only runs on 12 volt and which other one? What do I have? Oh yeah, the fan is also only 12 volts, so I had to step it down for these two appliances, get them back to 12 volts, and everything else is 24 volts. So the inverter is 24 volts, and the water heater is 24 volts, and our lights also, so that stuff can go directly off the battery. It did add a starter capacitor as well to that fridge, so it can turn on easier because the internet was claiming it's very hard to run a fridge, like a dorm fridge, on an inverter, but I don't know, since I, I modded it with the starter capacitor, I don't see any issue. Like, you can hear this inverter it, when the fridge starts, you hear the fans haul up a little bit. And once the fridge is running, it actually draws, I don't know, 40 watts or so. And then this thing is absolutely quiet. Was our big design uh, that we have this cool strips going down and even like coming around the corner there. And yeah, of course it's RGB and I can select any color I want on my tablet. Mm. And yeah, otherwise it's it's really more like a design feature. And when we want like real big light, we have our 
yeah, this this main light over here, um, the, the kitchen light and the shower has its also its separate light. Yeah, probably we have a hundred watt of light in here, like LED lights, so <laughs> it's <Wow>. way overpowered. <laughs> Two pieces. One is actually the light control. I design my own circuit board and I send it to a Chinese factory, and they, yeah, etched it and placed the components on and send it back to me, and then I wrote the code to run this in conjunction with the tablet. And same thing with this fan. Um, you don't see much, it's just this little box here where the circuit board sits in and it reads the switch. So when I uh, open it, it's working like any other fan, but again I can do on my tablet and also control it from my tablet again. Should turn off now. And what's also useful in the front we have our Android radio, so I have similar app on there too and I can see that we leave our fan cover open before we drive or when we're driving we're not sure do we leave something open you can immediately see what's happening it's a combination of a bunch of pieces so there's a raspberry pi sitting down here and it runs open hub it's like yeah a system that's designed for home automation and then I created these circuit boards that hook up to the raspberry pi or a wi-fi access point and then this Raspberry Pi and OpenHub also create this interface where you can define buttons and gauges and whatnot to create or control everything. Like, like a logic in here, when the battery runs low, it automatically turns off the water heater so we don't drain our battery. And I still have to program it. Like when we have noon and the sun is shining, we produce solar, it would automatically turn it on. Because, yeah, just use the energy instead of letting it go to not waste but not using it. Kind of as a trial run, I built a rooftop tent two years ago for my car. That was like, can I build something big? Because before I've done like Tinker projects. And yeah, after I saw that the rooftop tent went pretty well, I thought, okay, sure, let's <laughs> go on something even bigger. Yeah. Or at least I, I felt confident that I could do bigger. Yeah. We live in a van because we want to go rock climbing. We oh, had, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had a whole North American climbing tour planned and of course it's COVID, so things have changed a little, but another reason why we wanted to live in a van was to really like downsize and minimize our lifestyle and see if this level of freedom, having like a snail backpack on your back and traveling suits us. It's also been a long dream to just, yeah, go on a very long road trip and what better way than to carry your own home with you instead of yeah going to motels and whatnot or always pitch the tent. The reason we went with the DIY camper was probably one being finance. I mean yes you can get cheap old ones but then you also get all the kings and kongs they have so I rather build it from scratch and know what I'm getting. And I don't know, the, the second reason, maybe for the fun of it, which is somewhat a myth maybe, because it is also very hard work. I feel a lot safer in this camper because we built it, which means that if anything were to break down, we've done it once, we can do it again. Whereas if we had just gotten someone else to build it for us, then I wouldn't feel as confident. The biggest challenge that I've faced living in this van so far is the feeling of safety. Um, the first day we actually stayed at a Walmart parking lot and hearing all of the other cars slam their doors and other alarms going off throughout the night and just having like nonstop light coming in through our various windows, my brain was alert and awake the whole night and I would have nightmares of people breaking into the van of me like having like a backup plan like I know where the knife block is I can <laughs> access these weapons to protect myself I'm still slowly acclimating to yeah. feeling safe in this van and knowing that this bed is safe this this home is safe and I think that is probably going to take a little while probably another month or two before I like fully feel safe and every time yeah, I think that is yeah. the other big challenge where do we stay each night like yeah we have to find a place for, for every night now. It's not you turn your house key and you're there. It's, yeah, find a place you, you actually want to stay for the night. Before we were able to move into this box truck, we had to throw out a lot of stuff. 
and luckily we also have a bit of storage space at my parents house so we took full advantage of that but for me i don't know about you Morris, but for me it was like an existential thing <laughs> because i don't come from like an, an outdoorsy background um this is like a new kind of lifestyle like a full 180 shift in who i am for me and 10 years ago i was working on bay street and well, less than 10 years ago, I was working on Bay Street and I was wearing suits, you know, fancy purses and stuff. And I still had those, but I hadn't touched them in like five years. So to me, I like held on to that identity and like having to really like let go of those things. It was very difficult and it was a lot of decision making to let go of things. And um, we relied on <laughs> the Marie Kondo method. I don't know if you know about it, the magic of tidying it up. like holding a piece really close to our heart and being like, does this spark joy? No. <laughs> and then deciding that doesn't belong in the camper. For me, it was somewhat difficult because I already came to Canada with two suitcases. That was everything I had when I came to Canada. And then I started like accumulating stuff as everybody does. And then I was supposed to get rid of all my stuff again. So yeah, I was not the easiest and I think I still have kept quite some stuff with your parents actually <laughs> but then at the same time I thought it was also very freeing to throw out a lot of the stuff like just yeah say I haven't touched it in five years do I really need it and if we don't need it we don't bring it now it's the state where we probably still have too much stuff but at least it's nicely hidden biggest benefit I see in, in our van life now is that we can just go wherever we want we can stay in nice places or the same thing weather seems to be bad for the next two weeks we'll just drive on until the weather's good again and yeah this is feels like ultimate freedom to me not being tied down to this one spot but wherever i want to go i can go to now and do the activities or adventures that are there the advice i would give to someone who wants to do a diy van like this is to just do it. <laughs> uh, start small and take it one decision at a time. Because if we had gotten overwhelmed with the whole plan and the whole start A to Z at the very beginning, we wouldn't have gotten here. The first thing we did was decide, do we want this? Yes, no. And really break it down to binary steps. Do we want a van? Yes, no. What kind of van? This one, yes, no or not. You start building in from that and it was trying to chunk down everything into like digestible uh, small projects. Don't be scared of the process. Like you was never held a power tool before really, like maybe once. And now you're comfortable with it. You chop down big pieces of ply to the right size and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, similar for me, like, yes, maybe I have held a power tool before, but I still haven't cut down, like, I don't know how many square meters of ceiling. So yeah, just don't be scared. Make yourself a, a plan of how you attack <laughs> whatever project you have and then just start with it and, and go with it. There's the chance that you might have to buy a piece twice because the first time you try it, you screw up. But that's like the biggest piece. And if you're careful about what you screw up, it's not going to cost you a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. And two more quick things. Focus on the end adventure that you're going to take the van on and like make that your North Star. Always head towards there. And if, if every day you're putting a little bit more effort towards getting to your North Star, then go for it and then the second thing is make it fun i really hate that saying that goes if there's a will there's a way because i'm human and sometimes i just have no willpower left at the end of the of the day but if you make it fun then a will will always appear to make a living we actually saved a lot of money in the past years i do not buy into the idea of being an employee anymore i buy into the idea of being self-sufficient being able to make a living on my own so i dived into entrepreneurship and four months ago i started up my own life coaching business and that's flourishing even though we're on the road which is so amazing that i can help people from my camper van wherever whenever and moritz is actually coming up with some ideas of his own as well to breach into entrepreneurship uh, start his own company that will help you with automating stuff in your camper van so 
I think that's pretty exciting. Well, let's, let's secret? see. If it's, <laughs> the secret's out there. Now you're publicly uh, committed. <laughs> it's going to take off. So, yeah, I could try and get all my home automation app here into a real product that I can sell to other van lifers or just van builders. Yeah, this type of lifestyle is surely not for everybody. Like, you got to be fine with dealing with dirt. <laughs> like, <laughs> There's a likelihood you will crawl under your van and do stuff there. There's this whole issue around your waste, like be it household waste or human waste that you have to be comfortable with. And the third one, yeah, for sure is be able to acclimate to the situations you get thrown into, different places you stay for the night, different people you meet. Um, all these circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this would be the life for someone who is looking for adventure, who really wants to push their own boundaries in terms of what uncertainty and fear that they can handle. Because every day is going to be different. Every day when you wake up, it's going to be a completely new slate, new itinerary. So you really have to get to know yourself plus your partner and the relationship that you have together really well and as well as how you situate yourself in the world what kind of space you want to take up physically as well as I guess energetically is another way to say it I try to live my life by doing what scares me and this whole thing still scares the bejesus out of me and until I can feel comfortable living in this lifestyle and really having given it my all, then I probably won't stop. So I live my life by doing what scares me, rock climbing, living in camper vans, <laughs> biking over bumpy rocks <laughs> in forests. I think I have almost a hedonist life approach, which means like, just enjoy your life. Um, yeah, don't be too afraid of your future. Um, of course you don't want to ignore it, but yeah, like, make the present most value out of your present and don't live in the past or too far in the future either. Ideally, we'd be able to do full showers in here, but we do have a limit on water, so we have backup plans, which is a squeegee bottle and being comfortable out in nature and watching the important bits <laughs> and getting, you know, comfortable with that. Um, we are climbers after all, so we know what's, what it's like to be dirtbagging. Yes, for, there, there um, will be a bit dirtbagging involved. Yeah. My favorite part was our first night at like our maiden voyage when we got onto this nice little meadow in the greens and woke up and I looked at this beautiful ceiling and <laughs> you saw light coming through the windows which we didn't really have much in our place in Toronto and you could also see the white field and hear the birds chirping yeah that was a really a really nice waking up to that day and it also showed all this work that we put in it was such a yeah almost a relief to see everything is working because you're always like if you DIY your your stuff I'm at least always a bit concerned similar thing waking up and like seeing the ceiling that was like one of the <laughs> most favorite moments in my recent life and then stepping outside and smelling all the pine that is very native to Ontario and being like wow we are actually out here in the middle of nature and this is all we need and actually one thing you comment a lot on is we are off-grid everything that we've done today electricity wise was from solar we mm -hmm. didn't use anything on the grid and everything was completely off-grid and sustainable so that was really cool for us if people want to follow us on our journey then we're at road to pitches on youtube as well as on instagram hey everybody it's forrest the filmmaker hope you guys enjoyed that episode of alternative dwellings if you want to see more playlists are popping up right now where you can watch all of our archived episodes or if you want to see new ones Make sure to subscribe because they premiere at 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time every single Monday. Hope to see you guys there.